Hi, my name is Daniel Kolb and I'm here to present Preserving Conversations with Contemporary Holocaust Witnesses, Evaluation of Interactions with a Digital 3D Testimony. My presentation covers the results of our preliminary study evaluating user experiences with the first German-speaking interactive digital Holocaust testimony. Now, these interactive digital testimonies usually contain three main components. The first is the display. It simply shows the virtual human, the contemporary witness. It usually contains an idle loop, which serves as a lively waiting state. Number two is the Natural Language Processing System, or NLP for short. It receives and handles the user input. And number three, and most important of all, is the user themselves, probably an individual interested in the life story of the witness. The user interaction is rather simple. It starts with the user pressing down on a button or a touch screen, then voicing a question, inputting a verbal command, and once the question has finished, lifting the finger again, signifying the end of the input. The natural language processing system then analyzes the input for an intent or for the most matching answer. Once something has been found, the response video is played. We have around 1000 pre-recorded answers, out of which the NLP can select a response video. Once the response video has finished, the idle loop returns. We are also using stereoscopic videos, stereoscopic 3D, which means that there are two separate video streams, one for each eye, to increase the fidelity of the virtual human, to give him a more natural, a more realistic look, which is as close as possible to the real human. Here you can see an excerpt from the idle loop that I just mentioned. I also brought a small example to further illustrate the interaction. It starts with the user pressing down on the smartphone, posing a question, then lifting their finger, and the answer video will be played. Ich hatte, ich hatte keine Verwandte nach dem Holocaust. Wer konnte mir helfen? Die sind ja alle umgekommen. Here you can also see the 3D glasses that I used to separate the video streams for the user. These are required to experience the 3D effect. On to our study. We had 46 study participants. Each study participant received a summary of the witness life, which serves as a context for and helping them formulating the questions. They then spent 20 to 30 minutes interacting with the virtual testimony and at the end of that we presented each of them with a questionnaire featuring five point Likert scale questions and the option for open text feedback. The first major topic covered in the questionnaire was the usability. Here you can see that almost all of our participants found the interaction design easy to use. The second most major topic was the emotiveness. Here you can see that 32 out of 46 participants were able to perceive the emotions shown by the virtual contemporary witness in their answer videos and these emotions in turn were frequently evoking emotions in the participants themselves again. The third and concluding topic was the support for broader regular use in public institutions like schools or museums. Again, we had major agreement amongst our participants, which shows us that this is a viable design. People are open and receptive to digital 3D testimonies. However, the two dissenting voices that, voices that you can see down there cautioned us that a deficient matching system or that technical issues could be projected back onto the real human, not the technical system, and thereby potentially tarnishing the legacy of the real witness. Which tells us that in the implementation and planning and design phase of such a virtual testimony, very rigorous care must be taken. Thank you for your attention.